and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Paul goes to warn the church, it's really not another gospel, but it's a perversion of the gospel of Christ, which is really not another, Paul said, but there be some to trouble you and pervert or change the gospel of Christ. Well, let's have a look how they changed it, these initiated ones, to keep the truth away from the rest of the world. Which verses did they change? We know they changed them. Remember that Hort said, we will change it very slightly. Here a word, there a word, and nobody will even notice. And finally, when we have it all together, when we have all the little changes in one big package, if you read it all together, our doctrine, and not theirs, will be there. Isn't that what he said? That's exactly what he said. He said, they're going to change it. They're going to accommodate the sinner. They're going to accommodate their pleasures. They're going to accommodate all of their needs. And they're going to design a gospel with their own Christ, with their own doctrine. Then a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept it and feel at home in it. Then this awful warning from Paul. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you but that which we preached unto you let him be accursed let him be accursed if anybody preach another gospel what you've heard if anyone preach anything but the crucified christ 
If anyone preach anything to appease this man in his sin, that's not the gospel of me, Paul said. If anyone preaches another, let him be a cult. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept it. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with, with new words having various shades of meaning. Then the meaning attached to the new word uh, can be close to the old word. And as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized and then gradually that word replaced with another word. My tremble when I hear Paul warn us that Satan's going to come right into the church disguised as an angel of light. He's going to infiltrate into the church with his own ministers. They'll come angel like he said, preaching a false gospel of righteousness. Everything in scripture need not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words and uh, the the variability in meaning attached to any word can be uh, used as a uh, tool to change the entire meaning of scripture. For such are false prophets, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Most people won't know the difference, and this is another one of the times where he said the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. Then followed one of the most surprising statements of the whole presentation. He said some of you probably think the churches won't stand for this. And he went on to say, the churches will help us. Whose ends will be according to their works? Paul said they're going to come and they're going to glory in the flesh. They're going to glory in their might, their money. They're going to glory in their bigness, their numbers. And they're going to glory in the fact that they are so contemporary. They're going to glory in their acceptance by the world. Jesus warned, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. They're to come like gentle sheep, sincere, intelligent, bright. question is, what shall lay down with the lamb? The lion. The lion. The lion shall lay down with the lamb. Now in this reality it says, the wolf shall lay down with the lamb. Now lamb associates, the lamb associates to Jesus and the lion furthermore associates to Jesus who is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The wolf usually associates with evil and with Satan as in the scripture that says beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. What is going on? Regarding these changes I don't recall nor was I ever aware of Jesus telling you to kill. Yet, like Muhammad and the infidels, the Bible now says in Luke 19, to bring mine enemies before me and slay them. This change is more pervasive now than the others. All translations and versions of the Bible now say, kill, slay, or slaughter Christ's enemies. I want you to go there with me to see it yourself. Just to set the stage for where this appears, we're going to start out in verse 26, where it says, and you may recall, he says, And I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. That's always been a mystery to many unless it's explained that's not the lesson tonight it goes on to say in verse 27 but those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them bring hither and slay them before me 
We used to say, eschew them, which means to shun or to avoid. Well, not anymore. Now it says, kill them. We all know the scripture says, in the end, even the very elect, if possible, will be fooled. We contemporaneously know a great deception is coming. And we have postulated UFOs coming, saying they made us, there is no God. We waited with trepidation because we heard that the CERN machine or device would be turned on to its highest level looking for the God particle and saying it could open portals to alternate realities. Most people don't know that CERN has been used many times for several years. Who knows what it's wrought? Now Satan and his cohorts from the Illuminati up would love to change God's word and make him a liar or to avoid or postpone his, Satan's, destiny, if possible. It is the great deception, altering our reality. Now some feel that at some point, God will have gathered his little flock and prepared his greater flock and will close the door to salvation and redemption until the great tribulation and the millennium. It may be too late or becoming too late for new recruits. Scary. What do we do? Trust your memory. Trust your memory. Trust your memory. What would you do if all the Bibles in the world were put in a big pile and burned? No more Bibles. None. I would hope you would do what you were taught and what you remember as the truth. That's what we need to do now. Now I may lose half my congregation over this because it sounds so nutty on the face of it, but it is actually going on. Scripture said new wine and old wine skins, not bottles. Also the Bible says the lion shall lay down with the lamb, not the wolf. Just remember two things. So whatever word may come across you in front of you, his word is settled over there in heaven. And also the second thing is to remember that King David said that the truth of God's word and his laws are written in our hearts. We're not wrong. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy.
and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Shall any teach God knowledge, seeing he judges those that are high? One dieth in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. His breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, 
and slay them before me. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Heavenly Father, we are seeing in these perilous times the beginning of an Antichrist movement that is sweeping this nation through Canada, the United States, and all around the world. It's Antichrist. And his spirit now is moving and taking control over all the secular. He's taking control of government. And now that spirit is moving into the church. Oh God, I pray that you wake us up. God, shake us. Holy Ghost, come upon me. Let the anointing of the Spirit of God be upon me. I take your authority over demon power, every prince of power and power of darkness. Satan, you have no place in this house. You have no place lying spirits. I command you in Jesus' name to get out of this house, out of this church, out of minds that this message may be received. Spirit of the living God, come upon me. Let the Holy Ghost find us. Let the Holy Ghost mark us. Let nothing get past your Holy Ghost today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 4. Second, go back to 2 Thessalonians. And folks, keep your hand here at 2 Thessalonians. 2nd chapter. Keep your hand there so you keep coming back. Put a marker or something because we're coming back there all morning back to this. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Look at me please. This spirit of Antichrist is opposed to those who walk closely with the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who walk with God in intimacy and those who are worshipers. This is what the devil is after. This is what the Antichrist wants for himself. And he's going to come against everybody. He's going to come against every true believer who walks in the intimacy of Jesus Christ. He's going to come against you with everything the Antichrist possesses. That spirit, that invading spirit, he's going to come against you and try to attack you and try to get you to stop worshiping. He'll try to stop your intimacy with the Father. He'll try to give you doubt and fear about the advocacy of the cross of Jesus Christ. He will do everything to make inroads to hinder your worship. There's nothing the devil wants in this church more than the worship. To kill and destroy worship. That's what he wants in you more than anything else. He will do anything. He's not out to get you to be a drug addict, an alcoholic prostitute. He's not trying to get you to lie and steal and curse. He'll do that only if it disturbs your worship. He'll do it only to rob God of his praises. He's after worshipers. And if you're a worshiper, true worshiper, don't be surprised when all the, everything out of hell comes against you. When the Antichrist spirit comes and tries to knock you away. Don't be surprised by it. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God and all that is worship. Paul warns that a spirit of lawlessness is at work in the world and in the church. And we know, and now we know that 
what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Verse 6, look at it. Now we know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. What and who is withholding the Antichrist from taking over the whole nation and the whole world right now? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit who abides in you. Not the Holy Spirit that in some cosmic atmosphere. But the Holy Ghost in the church. The Holy Ghost in you and I. And it's this church and other Holy Ghost church and Holy Ghost people that are holding back the anarchy of hell and Satan in this city. They talk about the crime rate going down or up. Folks, if the Holy Ghost was lifted from this church and other churches, this city would be a raging hell right now. Because the stench of hell is already in our schools. The stench of hell is in our courts. The stench of hell is in our churches. And can you imagine what it would be if the Holy Ghost begins to step aside and say, Be revealed. So Holy Ghost holding back the storm. So that, verse 4, Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Now, folks, look at me. Quit looking to Jerusalem. Quit looking to the rebuilding of the temple where this man is going to come in and set himself up. He's already on the throne. He's already in his temple. You say, what, what is the temple? What is the temple? Go to 1 Corinthians, 3rd chapter. Did you know he was going to sit in the temple of God and show himself to be God? How many know that? He said he's, he's going to be revealed. He's going to sit in the temple of God and show himself to be God. All right, 1 Corinthians, 3rd chapter, verse, verse 16. Know you not that you are what? The temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Go to chapter 6. Familiar scripture, but I want to show you something. Verse 19, what? Know you not that you... This is 6, 19 of 1 Corinthians. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Go to 2 Corinthians 6. Do you want to establish this well in your mind? You're familiar with it? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and they shall be my people. Look at me, please. How can such an incredible, awful, frightful thing happen that at one time the living God sat on his throne, ruling and reigning in a vessel? How is it now that the Holy Ghost has departed and that temple, that throne of the heart has been vacated through lust, through pride, through covetousness, through gossip, through slander, through all of the things that we've been warned about time after time after time. How is it that we have many Christians who have grown careless, who don't walk righteously before Him anymore? And how is it that the spirit of Antichrist has moved in now and taken over. And according to this Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, he now sits in his temple, showing himself to be God. In other words, he is in control. He is absolutely in control. Who but Antichrist could mock everything that's sacred and holy? Who but the spirit of Antichrist could be behind it? And folks, he's getting bolder and bolder. Our society is on the brink of becoming a raging hell. But sadly, that same Antichrist spirit is moving rapidly into the church of Jesus Christ. We talk about the gates of hell not prevailing against the church. But folks, you've got to know that he's talking about a certain church, an overcoming holy remnant church. He's not talking about that great church mess that's out there being ruled and reigned by the spirit of Antichrist. He's talking about a particular church called out from the world. Only that church will prevail. The gates of hell will not touch that church.
Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Every true believer who walks in the intimacy of Jesus Christ, he's going to come against you with everything the Antichrist possesses. That spirit, that invading spirit, he's going to come against you and try to attack you and try to get you to stop worshiping. He'll try to stop your intimacy with the Father. He'll try to give you doubt and fear about the advocacy of the cross of Jesus Christ. He will do everything to make inroads to hinder your worship. There's nothing the devil wants in this church more than the worship. To kill and destroy worship. That's what he wants in you more than anything else. He will do anything. He'll do it only to rob God of his praises.
He's after worshipers. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. He'll do it only to rob God of his praise. He's after worshippers. He's after worshippers. He's after worshippers. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes, and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day, and I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, and I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head, and I will make it as the morning of an only sun and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Another area of discussion was religion. Uh, this is a, an avowed atheist speaking. Uh, and he said, religion is not necessarily bad. A lot of people seem to need religion with its mysteries and rituals, so they will have religion. 
but the major re religions of today have to be changed because they are not compatible with the changes to come. The old religions will have to go, especially Christianity. Once the Roman Catholic Church is brought down, the rest of Christianity will follow easily. Then a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept it and feel at home in it. Most people won't be too concerned with religion. They will realize that they don't need it. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with, with new words having various shades of meaning. Then the meaning attached to the new word uh, can be close to the old word. And as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized. And then gradually, that word replaced with another word. Um, I don't know if I'm making that clear, but the idea is that uh, everything in Scripture need not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words, and uh, the variability in meaning attached to any word can be uh, used as a uh, tool to change the entire meaning of Scripture and therefore make it acceptable to this uh, new religion. Most people won't know the difference, and this is another one of the times where he said, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. Then followed one of the most surprising statements of the whole presentation. He said, some of you probably think the churches won't stand for this. And he went on to say, the churches will help us. There is no elaboration on this. Uh, it was unclear just uh, what he had in mind when he said the churches will help us. In retrospect, I think uh, some of us now can understand what he might have meant at that time. A sign from God. A sign from God. Just hours after the Pope announced his surprise resignation, the heavens over Rome opened and the top of St. Peter's Basilica was struck by lightning. As the sky was lit up by the huge bolt, it led to speculation as to whether Benedict XVI's boss was less than happy with the news. The apparent divine intervention came as the 85-year-old pontiff sent shockwaves through the church on Monday after announcing his retirement, the first pope to do so in 700 years, saying he no longer had the mental or physical strength to carry on. Two children joined Pope Francis for his weekly prayer from the papal apartments. The pontiff used the service to call for peace and reconciliation in Ukraine, and to symbolize this, the children released two white doves into the air. Bye. 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 But as they took off, one was attacked by a passing seagull, while the other was repeatedly pecked by a crow. Noticeably upset, the Pope embraced the boy and patted his head, while the young girl just laughed. It's not known what happened to the doves after the incident. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast.
and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully, and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty, and also the holy people. Through his cunning he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. To, to, to see this kind of event, which is organized by the government and promoted by the government, this sends out a strong message to all the communities living in the UAE and I'm sure for um, people who are outside of the UAE. The message is very clear that UAE is, uh, has an open door policy. It welcomes people of all nationalities, color, creed, religion. That is the message that has gone out. And I think this kind of reinforces, you know, the idea of safety and security and peace and harmony that people feel here. So I think that is very important, especially for the residents of this country. But Anjana, to what extent does this message reflect the reality for Christians living in the UAE and more generally on the Arabian Peninsula? I would say that the, you know, as, a, as, a, as a journalist who has worked in this country, you know, there are, there are various churches that are built in the, in the UAE. Even during this visit, you know, they have signed an accord to build two, uh, a church and a mosque. And Christians of various denominations, they enjoy the freedom of worship here. There are more, uh, temples, Hindu temples here. There are synagogues where people worship. So that is what it is important. I think, you know, sending out this message of tolerance, especially in a year where that UAE has dedicated as the year of tolerance. I think the ground reality is exactly what you have witnessed here. People live in harmony. People are not discriminated against religion or race. More than 130,000 people attended the event in the capital, Abu Dhabi. It wrapped up a, a three-day trip to the country, the first ever by a pontiff. Francis said his main aim was to promote harmony and tolerance between Christians and Muslims. He also condemned war. This story for, you know, almost three weeks. Everyone that we spoke to, they said, this is unbelievable because they are getting to see their Holy Father, who they consider, you know, head of the Catholic Church in a Muslim country, in an open space, conducting a papal mass. And Anjana, a in the country for more than 15 years, this was, uh, this was one of a kind, you know, that stadium was packed from the moment we walked in, which was around 8.30 in the morning and the mass started at 10.30. So the stadium was packed with people and as they waited for the pontiff to, to make an entry and go around in his Pope mobile. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Alá. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto. Buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. 
creo en el amor. Confío en vos para difundir mi petición de este mes. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. Confío en tu oración. The idea is that uh, everything in Scripture need not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words, and uh, the variability in meaning attached to any word can be uh, used as a uh, tool to change the entire meaning of Scripture and therefore make it acceptable to this uh, new religion. Most people won't know the difference, and this is another one of the times where he said, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. Then followed one of the most surprising statements of the whole presentation. He said, some of you probably think the churches won't stand for this. And he went on to say, the churches will help us. We are called, as we like to say, to look into one another's eyes in order to see more deeply and in order to recognize the beauty of God in every living human being. Our advice is to make friends to followers of all religions. Muy importante porque la mía, mi vida religiosa se enriqueció con explicaciones de él. Se enriqueció muchísimo, ¿no? Y supongo que también alguna mía, ¿no? Bueno. Fue nuestra vocación religiosa la que propició el que nos encontremos en la vida. No matter from which side of the mountain you are climbing, we should be helping each other so that we can all get to the same place. So there is need for people to make friends. Personal contact, personal friendship, then we can exchange deeper level of experience. Honor other religions like you do your own. We need to get together and know one another just to discover and explore those uh, commonalities. That starts a process where uh, prejudices uh, go away, where new insights are born, and where basically hope is born. It's not complicated. And I would say to everyone, start with sharing what we all share, which is the pleasure of conversation. One of the wonderful things about spending time with people completely unlike you is you discover how much you have in common, the same fears, the same hopes, the same concerns. I think I'll keep it very simple. It's probably time to talk less, listen more. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it.
I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. And Jesus came, and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen.